All right, guys, we're here. Episode three. I think this is becoming one of our favorite shows already. So let's just get started and talk about this. Okay, so by think, you mean definitely is becoming one of my favorite shows. There's a couple of things I want to just clear at the top here. Um, some corrections. If this is your second or first time hearing us, we did cover episodes one and two, one podcast, but there are some things that we may have gotten wrong because it's a complicated show, a lot of material. And of course it's taking place in Japan, 1600. So it's, there's a lot going on here. So some things that we got cor incorrect that I just want to make sure that we all have noted. So going forward, we should be better about is the first thing being the difference between the two main religions that are uh, new to Japan. And that being uh, the Protestant religion that, that John Blackthorne follows, and then uh, the Catholic religion that all the Portuguese follow. I think we're sort of mixing up the Christianity cat Catholicism umbrella, but going forward, we're going to try and clean that up a little bit better. Basically, John Blackthorne is Protestant and everybody else is a Catholic. That's how we're going to view it. Um, and that, of course, doesn't count all the Japanese people that, that um, their religion is Buddhism. So that was one of the things I wanted to talk about. And then another thing that I think we got wrong was, and this is my fault, I did not realize who was talking to Yaichio, who is the um, the heir in early episode one, I think it was. But I said it was a caretaker, but it was actually the widow of the last Taiko. So I don't know how important mm. she's going to be, but it was her because we ended up seeing her in the flashback right. in episode two. That was my bad. I completely forgot and I, I won't mess that up again and then the third thing is just i personally read a little bit more about the idea of the concubines for these heads of households which was really throwing us off when we were talking about who's the wife who's the who's giving birth to these kids we cleared some of it up with the heir and lady achiba who is the concubine for the previous taiko but that is like a very important cultural aspect for some of these leaders because they don't continue to have their wives have the kids on their behalf, but they have younger people known as concubines to basically give birth to their kids. So that also comes into play and I'm sure it will continue to come into play, but I wanted to shout those out because we're going to try and keep those straight. And then besides that, my only other correction was the disrespect that we mm -hmm. gave to Yabu because Jesus, man, I should have stuck with my guns. I thought there was going to be redemption and there might not be, but I think the door is open. That's more for the actual episode itself, though, because that's a huge theme for episode three. And that's where we're covering here. Episode three, tomorrow is tomorrow. And then the last thing I'll do before I open it up to high level thoughts is I just want to say what the Internet is currently feeling about Shogun. And it is beyond my wildest dreams. I'm so happy that it is as universally loved as it currently is. Because right now, Shogun on Rotten Tomatoes has a 99% from critics, 94% from audience. And then the IMDb ratings for the three episodes in order is currently 8.6, 9.2, and 9.1. So this is like the making of one of the best single season shows ever. And I'm really happy that everybody in, in on Twitter, Reddit, IMDb, Rotten Tomatoes, they're all kind of agreeing with us because this show rocks. Like the only thing that can take up headspace right now for me besides Shogun is Dune 2, which everybody should go see. This show's amazing. So tell me what you guys thought, how are we feeling after the third episode of our first season? Yeah, this has quickly become you know, Tuesday is Shogun Day. Mm -hmm. Like, that is mm -hmm. what I get excited for. I wake up and I'm like, I get to watch my favorite show right now at the end of the day. So it's so fun. I mean, episode three, can I feel like it turns our viewpoints on so many characters just on their head. What you were saying about Yabu, I mean, we'll get into it more, but we were like, yeah, he's irredeemable. But like mm -hmm. now he's he's like a bro. He's a homie. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. I knew I knew Jimmy's gonna have some <laughs> thoughts about it, but we'll see. <laughs> no, it's it's a lot of fun. And the the characters drive and what their goal is has so much to do with what their actions will be. And it's so different for every character. So it's so much fun. I'm loving it. I'm ready to jump back right into episode three. Yeah, I texted you guys last night. I watched it a little bit later than I wanted to. And I was like, Jesus, I freaking love Shogun. I just had to text you guys. I knew you're probably already asleep, but I just had to say it. I just smile at the whole time I'm watching this show, and I really enjoyed this episode a lot. Um, like Paul and Luke were saying, just a lot of information given to us on these characters. Very, very good buildup of certain characters, learning a lot more about them. Uh, there were some 
shocking things that happened that I wasn't expecting that we'll talk about. And going further into the visuals, again, my goodness, these visuals are unbelievable, especially see the scenes where they're showing the black ship on the water and a lot of those scenes. Ridiculous. So let's just get into it. I'm ready to talk. Let's go. Okay, so this coverage is going to follow closer to our format for the second episode on the last podcast where it's mostly just one bucket. There's not too much jumping around. There are two scenes I'm going to point out that don't necessarily flow directly with Toronaga or JB, a.k.a. John Blackthorne, who I'm probably going to keep referring to him as JB because it's so easy. And um, <laughs> But anyway... Uh, also, I saw on Reddit that people referred to Yabushigi as Yabu, so we can completely feel comfortable oh. taking that. That seems like a community. Nice. Nickname. Yeah, so I love that. That was a good catch, Paul. Um, and then job, lastly, Paul. I got to rebump the Discord again, and then specifically um, for Lanson50, if that pronunciation's right, he's the man. He's been commenting and talking with us a lot, and I really appreciate his insight. So if you guys want to talk more after the podcast in between episodes, definitely go over to our Discord. I check that thing every day, a couple times a day. It's so fun to just interact with the community. Um, so with that Agreed. being said... Let's jump into the episode, episode three, and I'm going to actually cover one of those bucket, those isolated scenes just to because it'll help us flow through the rest of the episode. And the first isolated scene that doesn't have Tornaga or JB in it is going to be taking place on the ship with the Portuguese priests, specifically uh, Father Martin. And I believe the other father's name, which they still don't, they sometimes say Father Visitor. They just always call him Father, but I believe it's Father Del Agua. Aqua? I don't know how to really say that, but... The main father, who's obviously um, supersedes uh, Martin, it's they're they're having a conversation, and it, they're speaking with Captain General, who again they don't really specify the captain of the black ship's name, but they keep calling him Captain General. Uh, so, do you, either of you guys know his name? Did you write it down? Because I I don't think they say it. They don't. The only reason I I had it written down was because that if you watch in subtitles, it says it episode two as he's barking orders. Um, that being said, I have to go find it in my notes. So I think it's Ferreira. Does that sound Ferreira? right? Ferreira. Yeah. Ferreira? Yep. Yeah. I'm just mm -hmm. going to keep calling him Captain General just because that's a cool title. Cool. So this whole conversation is just them really deciding what to do here. And they're actually telling Captain General that he can't leave. He's not getting Tornaga's blessing to leave with the black ship. And he just says, screw it. Walks outside with Rodriguez, says, we're leaving tonight because we work for the crown, not for Portugal, which is an important distinction. He doesn't care as much about the religion aspect of it. And that's like his alliance is basically to money in the crown. So that's going to come into play for the rest of the episode. But I just wanted to call out that scene real quick. And now we can jump into the actual mm. top of the episode, um, unless you guys had a comment on that. Yeah, give me one second because I want to. I know his actor, and I, it's it's pissing me off. Oh yeah, you mentioned that off pod. I think that you recognized him. Hmm, who is he? He's literally the guy from Breaking Bad. When well, actually, I'm going to keep this on pod because I love this scene. But yeah, yeah, this he's the guy good. on Breaking Bad when they're when they're doing the deal with Walter Walter White when he's Heisenberg, and it's the famous meme where he's like, "Say my name." Oh, no yeah. way. You're goddamn right. Yeah, that's that's the guy he's talking to. So, yeah, oh. well, I knew I recognized him. I can't believe I didn't get that. That's kind of epic. That's awesome. Rodriguez in this scene is like, yo, dude, if we don't if we leave without permission, we're never coming back. And he's like, you know what? Fuck it. We don't work for them. Screw it. So even Rodriguez is worried about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, big and Rodriguez episode. Yeah. He he learns that the pilot is still alive. And he's like, that's what I was just going to say. Mm hmm. Yeah, I got that a lot of words about their alive. relationship. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so let's take it from the top. And this is going to take place right after the assassination attempt on JB from episode two. And more specifically, the ramifications for Yabu. And like from his perspective, he's getting summoned by Toronaga, who's really trying to investigate and prod a little bit here. And from he's like in the process of writing his will. Like I think he thinks he's about to be executed for his part in this whole um, assassination attempt. But I like that they quickly just give you extra world building about this secret society of Amida, which are sworn ass assassins that are sworn of the Buddha Amida. I don't really know necessarily know what that means, but it, you can just take it as like a assassin religious group that is very, very skilled. And shout out to our Game of Thrones comparisons when I'm going to say the faceless men. So I know people hate that. Yeah, <laughs> damn right. It's crazy, though, that they're literally trained to be assassins and then they may just be a maid in deep undercover for years and years and for one kill. It's like the Winter Soldier. 
and she failed. Yeah, that's got to be like your life's purpose. You messed up. That's got to be brutal for her as she's bleeding out. But she was amazing. That explains why she was able to kill so many people oh, so yeah. efficiently. Mm. Like that actually cleaned up my idea of like, can people just be that good? But it yeah. makes a lot. It makes a ton of sense. She was trained her whole life for that moment. And of course, right. Tornaga is going to assume and start asking about Yabu, who had all these coincidental timings in a lot of things, especially around JB. So he's putting the pieces together. He's thinking he's sketchy. And that's what this whole conversation's about. Um, and it's actually awesome because Tornaga is not as cutthroat and it, as like we kind of assumed or I assumed from the first two episodes. And he was actually willing to hear out his quote unquote old friend and give him a chance to really lay all the cards on the table and get to like what his true motivations were, which he kind of explains is to expand his fiefdom. And that's what a lot of people that are going for power are doing in this time period. So Tornaga doesn't seem to hold it against him, but he will keep that in the back of his head. He will have less trust for it, but it was just a really good conversation between these two to show you that Tornaga is willing to use any tool in the toolbox that presents itself to him. I love this. Just the way that Tornaga says, you know, aren't you my reliable friend? Like, why would I want to end your mm -hmm. life today? Just the way he talks, everything in his mind is proper etiquette. It's don't reveal your true thoughts at all. I just love it. So, all right, this goes back to, and we're going to be talking about this all episode, just like with me and Martine in the last episode, when it comes to like how you're seeing people through a certain lens and how you're going to take things. Did you guys take it like, I mean, he's obviously working with a Shidu and he walks in thinking he's going to be dying here. But mm -hmm. now that now that our boy is able to understand that in his head, he's like, yeah, he's probably working with a Shidu, but I can maneuver this to at least have him on my side for now. I'm going to keep mm -hmm. him alive. He gets what he wants. Yabu gets what he wants, but he is still not for Tornaga. Like, he's using this scenario to get what he wants, and he's happy that Tornaga's going to give him what he wants. But really, he would have took Tornaga's seat on the council. I don't yeah. know. I think it's just opportunity is what all he cares I, about, and it's not deeper than that. Like, I don't think he cares yeah. who wins. If it's a Shido or Tornaga, he just cares about not dying and coming out on the other side, because that seems to be how... I took his conversation with his nephew Omi from the first ep or the first episode, and now it kind of plays out. Once Tornaga escapes being a prisoner, he can actually be Team Tornaga if it if it works out. But he has that weird line with the promise is that he's going to keep for Ishido. That's coming up. I still yeah. think he's playing both yeah. sides, but I j I don't yeah, think he's right. just going to be anti Tornaga no matter what. No, no, yeah. yeah. So what I'm getting at is that he took the opportunity. Again, we talk about the schemer. He took the opportunity to figure out that he's going to be kept alive and he's going to get what he wants from Tornaga's side of things, so he's back on Tornaga's side for now. Mm -hmm. But if Tornaga was killed in this assassination attempt, even though it obviously wasn't for him, it was for JB, Ashidu was going to offer the council seat, if that's true or not, to Yabu, and he would have said, hell freaking yeah, I'm on your yeah. side, homie. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think it's more the uh, cliche line it's not personal it's just business like he doesn't really right, care yeah. like whose side mm -hmm. it's on and i don't think tornaga is going to be like oh you were actively fighting against me but i'm not going to hold it against you because now you're on my team right so um for now at least so that's all that's well, all I'm yeah it. and yeah yabu could jump back and forth i really really and tornaga know. we'll we'll get to it but he finesses the hell out of yabu mm-hmm Mm, I just we'll like all the character it. work that they did with Yabu and and John the, with the whole cliffside. Like I thought all of that laid the groundwork for them to be able to work together in the future. And we were calling that out on the last podcast. And that seems to be the direction that they're going to go in. Like they're going to train the soldiers up together. So it's going to be really fun to see him. And I hope he gains even more respect for John and just sticks on the good side that's really my hope now i'm just rooting yeah. on for yabu to be a good guy uh but anyway let's just keep going because that a lot of this conversation is going to rehash itself as soon as ashido enters the scene because i'm going to bucket these next couple of scenes together as everything up until the plans start to spread where they're going to leave osaka and they're going to get their whole parade together and then everything up through 
them going through the double check by Ashido. So that includes mm -hmm. John's acting, Blackthorn's acting. Yeah. Scene. That includes the funny little warlock scene that J that JB has with Mariko. All of that, like everything, including like Ashido showing up and then checking the different vessels to make sure vassals, I should say, to make sure that they're they're not holding Toranaga and he's not escaping. So whatever you guys want to start with talking there, worth bringing up, go for it. The Mariko jb scene while he's getting healed and he keeps calling the healer a warlock it was just so <laughs> funny he was like oh and he's gonna you know let me let my blood right and you know say a curse or remove the poison she's like dude what the hell are you talking about <laughs> she's like what uh, is a warlock yeah uh he also jb got that line off from Marigo again saying like oh like were you able to finally see what those priests are capable of now kind of maybe um flipping the switch not flipping the switch entirely but making some progress on that Mariko trusting the you know uh, Catholic priests um, aspect of all that, and just the the way that she talks about like pillowing, and <laughs> it's just and how JB turns that into like oh this guy's a pimp is just money <laughs> like their comedy in the show is so funny but yeah. it's like nobody's laughing in the show right like it, it's all just yeah. for the viewer it's so funny. <laughs> Rodriguez like chuckles Jarvis. when he has those lines though, which is why he's True. great. But yeah, yeah. Cosmo Jarvis has been doing really well with his like weird voice. I mean, I read something online about how he was gonna make it an even different voice where it's gonna be even more like quote unquote weird, but mm -hmm. um just the way like he has his mannerisms and his responses, and obviously we get to some more hilariousness in the in the scenes with the two ships and the two the two boats. But yeah, the, the back and forth with Mariko and him uh, was hilarious. And again, it's just adding more chemistry between the two of them. And we get even more chemistry later on. <laughs> uh, talking about a super unfunny scene. How about when Hiramatsu brings Fuji the ashes of her husband and her son? And mm. he gives a whole uh, speech about, you know, um, now you have a greater fight that you need to take part in. But he was kind of winding that into the story of her father's samurai swords and mm -hmm. how they fought together in Korea. Do you think that he was just using the swords as that tool to get across his point? Or do you think those are going to come back? Uh, I think that was to get across his point, but it also re-emphasizes what Tornaga said, where uh, Fuji's dad was very honorable right i think they mm -hmm. um i think they 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 put a lot of respect on his name and this is actually super sad for hiramatsu because now at the end of this episode both of his sons are dead we don't know how if he has any more and i actually am happy we really got to highlight uh what's his name Bu buntaro buntaro yeah which is yeah. actually his nickname because he's actually not uh, some, yeah. uh it's like hirakatsu i think is his actual name but, but we're gonna right. go with buntaro um and i i like how they layered him in this episode and a lot of this conversation comes from these couple of scenes here because like he's an asshole we hated him already from the first two episodes and we continue to hate him every time he interacts with women or children but it is cool that they're throwing some respect on his name as like a badass samurai and we get to see that and the fact that spoiler alert, he dies later and frees up mariko to be single almost like a full all-around just win like we get, we get yeah. a little bit of respect for this asshole whatever and now he's dead we don't have to even like talk about him anymore and the the kid yeah so there's just i feel like a lot of wins but hiramatsu has a rough family like the fact that he is the one that's alive and he's so much older and both of his kids are already dead like japan has like a crazy history of like all these wars and it just sucks that it's just so like embedded in these different families and like but I but back to your question, like I don't know if the the samurai swords are actually going to come back. I think it was more just like a powerful moment for Fuji yeah, and her grandfather. Yeah, gotcha. Great acting from Fuji's actress with the crying and then like the camera panning into her eyes as she's crying, but also like looking like she's going to have some revenge or something. Man, she was like very determined. Yeah, seriously. Following Mariko's footsteps, kind of. I saw. I was nervous. She's gonna grab the sword and try to do something. She should. Hey, man, we saw Mariko with the with the spear. My God, she is she just like the coolest character in the show. She She's might. awesome. <laughs> I um, love her. But let let's take it to the outside part of leaving Osaka right before Shido comes in. We're starting to get the plan here, or I guess it's as this scene progresses, we're seeing the plan through JB's eyes, but. 
Yabu has the badass armor. I like the whole army's like look. Like it just looks so freaking cool. And they're all gearing up. What the whole idea is that they're gonna leave Osaka by going to the port, take the boats out, and then go back to Edo, which is the home base for Toronaga and his family. So that's all happening here. We see Lady Kiri, she's involved. Lady Shizu, who is I think the pregnant concubine for Toronaga, and correct me if right. that Yes. Okay. Yep. That's um, how she's I took it. Yep. Yep. And she's in on the plan too. She's going to use her pregnancy as like a distraction. So all of this really comes together. And I thought this was awesome because you love to see when Toronaga schemes, and it's it's great that they tell us a bunch. Like Mariko even says later and talks about his backstory, how he learned the game like super early because he was a prisoner. But seeing it in action like this quickly and just quick on his feet type of thing, like all of this was great for me. I, I really loved it and. They did it perfectly because they waited until the Shido shows up and checks all the all the spots. And then he sees uh, with the Lady Kiri in there and was like, OK, and then the pregnancy happens and then they do the switch. So like it was basically like everything was good until the part two of the checks. But mm -hmm. from that first part, was there anything besides? And I guess I want to shout out Nagakado, who is the name of Toronaga's son. He gets some highlights here, too. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Tornaga is so secretive about his plan. His son, Nagakata, didn't even know. Like, mm -hmm. he's talking to Yabu yeah. saying, like, oh, yeah, my father's not even coming. He's staying behind. So, one, he trusts nobody. He's kind of getting into that game of friends and enemies that he's trying mm -hmm. to tell his son about later on. Um, but just the setup, too, because Lady Kiri just coming down, being like, oh, I'm just a slow old woman. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. give me my time. All a show because she runs away so Tornada can jump in and she's obviously quick and nimble and silent about Hell it. Oh, yeah. So everything was just perfect. I had no idea what was going on. Um, Just a quick shout out to Buntaro again. He's just being a dick to his son who comes mm -hmm. out to Mariko and is like, oh, like, please don't go. And An that makes me shout out to him. <laughs> yeah. That, and he's like, oh, don't be such a suckling child. So just this <laughs> Buntaro's warrior mindset coming in again. But that makes me super nervous that Mariko's son is staying behind. After all this goes down, episode four, I'm like, oh, shit. He's either going to die or be used as a hostage or something terrible. And but I how, really... much, how much power or leverage is that even like over Toronaga? Like, does he care about Mariko's son? So that son would be that technically Hiramatsu's grandson. Great grandson? Or no, grandson, no, right? Ah yes, yes, yes. Okay, but yes, yeah. but like if you're if you're worried about the son, the or Hiramatsu's grandson, you should also be worried about Hiramatsu, who we know is still stuck in the capital. So that's the leverage on Toronaga. I don't think he can handle himself. True, but like I don't <laughs> think Toronaga would do anything to get Mariko's kid back. I don't think he would get anything for Hiramatsu back at this point. Probably I feel, not. I felt like yeah. that was just taking that as an L, unless he can escape. They're all about. They're all about duty, man. Just like Bantara when he salutes him right before and bows to him before he goes to his death. It's just, it's part of the plan. And I, I don't know. He seemed to be able. To, I, I guess we're we're jumping ahead here, but he, but here Matsu seemed to be able to handle himself, and it looked like it was a way where it's not like Ashidu can be like seize him. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know if they can actually do that without it being a huge problem. Well, so. He he even says here, like, Harumatsu, as Ishido comes up to, like, check everything, like, Nagakata is, like, making a scene, like, oh, you can't do that, they're not prisoners. And he's like, oh, Lord Ishido, you honor us by showing mm -hmm. your respects. Like, he's playing the honor, Hiramatsu, that is, is playing the honorable role. Even later on, he even says, like, I'll, I fear that you only have four mm -hmm. people. Like, he's the being, way like, he che cheeky and fake. <laughs> like, but yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, mm -hmm. I, but I also, like yeah, that's proper. his only hope is to, like, kind of get out of there just because everybody respects him. Yeah. <laughs> it's, he's yeah. great, man. I, I love Hiromatsu. I just want no more tragedy to happen to him and his family because he's dealing with a lot going on here. But he's, you know, at the end, he's sort of as good of a place as have we seen in the series with Toronaga being safe, but let's keep going here because they do that first initial check. And then we'll just keep talking about the really funny check where JB and Mariko noticed that Toronaga did the switch and he's aware. Mm -hmm. And then Ashido had that secondary plan of, of at the, at the gateway to leave Osaka officially and start heading to the port. We're going to recheck and JB starts freaking out. And I love this because he doesn't want Toronaga 
killed or like anything. He wants this plan to go because he hates whatever's going on in the capital and he wants to just escape Japan like he was telling mm -hmm. Rodriguez. I'm not going to die here. So he wants to get out. He'll do whatever. And he thinks his best way to getting out is to making sure Toronaga's safe. So he plays, he puts on his best dumb barbarian actor face and just crushes. It was like laugh out loud funny. Mm -hmm. Some of these <laughs> things that he was saying, he's like, who shame women in this country? Mm -hmm. Like all this stuff was, was so good. And, you know, it turns out pretty well here. Unholy I mean, perversion, just screaming <laughs> with spittle coming out of his mouth. Yeah, <laughs> it was crazy because him and Marika were the only ones that understood what was going on. And he says mm -hmm. to her, like, no one's going to do anything. Well, nobody freaking knows it's a problem. You know, nobody right. knows that what this plan is. So Tornaga, I love thinking about this from his point of view because he's can you imagine like the door opens and he's like, oh, shit, you got me, bro. Like you obviously would have to think that he's just going to come out swinging. But yeah. he's sitting there like shit in his pants, probably. And JB saves his ass. And obviously we get to later parts of the episode where he gets this huge honor for Tornaga. Well, this starts it right here. I mean, episode two, they gain some respect. And especially at the end when he thinks he's saving him from the assassin, even though Tornaga already took care mm -hmm. of her. That's the start, and then this one really cemented it because, again, Tornaga mm -hmm. would be fully dead if it wasn't for JB. JB was the only one that could do anything, one, because, like you said, there's only, like, a handful of people that even knew this which happened, and two, you know, if Mariko steps out of line and starts doing something, she's just going to be killed. Like, she, yeah, like, done and done. Like, anybody who isn't this heretic barbarian, like, would just be out of line and, ki like, killed right there. So and JB knew he was the only outlet. Mm -hmm. And it's to his advantage that he's like yelling all this crazy shit and they have no idea what he's saying. Right. So if they knew what he was saying, he'd be like, who gives a shit what, what you're saying, bro? But because mm -hmm. they're like, what is he saying? What the hell is this bullshit? <laughs> like, this is crazy. <laughs> they're trying to figure it out. It's adding time to get to the point where later they're like, all right, just move ahead, move ahead. Ashita mm -hmm. wants you to move ahead. Like they get to that luck. He just bought them time and it was just perfect. Mm -hmm. It was so good. Two things like, real quick. <laughs> so many good um, quotes. So many good quotes. Uh, one, on the first time I watched this, I swear the scene was like four minutes, five minutes long. I was like, well, he's freaking out. I'm like, oh, my God, he's going to get caught. On the second rewatch, yeah. it was done in like 45 seconds. And I was like, really? <laughs> that was it? Um, so it was just, I guess, painful to watch the first time. Still hysterical. Um, but just, Jimmy, you kid on this earlier. This is when Josen and Yabu talk real quick and Yabu has a line. He's like, I must serve my pledge to Tornaga, but tell Lord Ishida that I keep my promises. I don't yes. know what if he was saying, oh, I tell Ishida I keep my promises just to be safe on the march or if he is really playing both sides. Uh, I really don't know. I really don't know. He's playing that game, baby. Thank you for calling that out because that was a very important line. I'm happy we discussed it. And Josen, if you just don't know, is Ishida's just right-hand man in this episode. Yeah. I don't know how high up in the clansman he is for Ishido, but he's important there. Um, yeah, I'm still on team. He's just going to go who, with whoever's feeding him at that moment, yeah. right? And and it will eventually turn to JB fully turning him onto Toronaga's side is my prediction of how this will go. And I think as they get work close together, just like Toronaga has throughout this episode, when you're working with JB, you're going to realize he's a good dude and he's the guy you want to be hanging out with. So that's where mm -hmm. I think that's, that whole thing is going. You are a silly little man, and your hair looks like a tail of a pony. That's <laughs> such a good line. <laughs> and, and then he even turns to he's like, sorry what I said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but okay, so so let's do this. This is going to be a fun little uh, action scene that we get to talk about, because there hasn't been too much action for, for this show with filled with samurai, but we really get into that for episode three and specifically this part which is skipping ahead into the day it's at the night it's it's nighttime walking to the woods they're almost at the port and they get jumped by one of the councilmen one of the catholic councilmen kiyama who is only into the religion if you remember for greed and ambition so that's what he uses the religion for but he's there not knowing that Tornaga is being secretly transported and his whole thing right. is he just wants to kill the heretic of the religion he'll do whatever Fuck Ishido's men. He doesn't care if they die as as um just collateral, collateral. damage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he's just so all this is happening, and Jimmy already brought it up. Mike Mariko steps up, she's slicing necks. Toronaga gets a couple kills. Everybody shines. And I hate to give the flowers, but Buntaro kills it as well. Yeah. 
Buntara this episode. I was like, this guy is a just straight warrior. And Mariko horrible and JB, dad. yeah, horrible dad. Horrible dad, horrible <laughs> husband. Yeah, yeah straight horrible, anime character. Horrible person, probably, but <laughs> yeah. They had they talked about it a little bit. It, like as it's dark, Mariko and JB are like, Oh, you what's your family? Oh, he's your husband. That's when they kind of start getting into a little bit of that talk. And even Mariko says, like, he is a very respected and strong warrior. And I was like, all right, let's see it. And my mm -hmm. God, he showed it. Like he, he was fight. with with the bow, with the long bow, he was picking off people left and right. Um, even with everything going on, like Josen's men are now yelling, like, oh, Tornago, it was hiding the whole time. He's trying to escape. Like, Buntaro doesn't swap sides. He respects his leader and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And it just adds so much to the his final scene, which we'll get to. But what they did with his character for me personally, I was like, I have no idea how to feel about this guy because I respect him, but I hate how he acts. Everybody, I yeah. completely agree, and that's why he's a good character. He's well written because he makes you feel conflicted. Is he like, what side do you do you even feel comfortable saying you like him? Like, who knows? But yeah, there's different aspects of him that are awesome, and then others that suck. I think we can all agree on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. More pluses for JB because he's the one who literally again starts running for Tornaga to let him out and to mm -hmm. save him. And obviously, we just said it for the third time. Mariko grabs a spear. They're all helping out. This is like everything you could have asked for from Tornaga because earlier in the episode, and we'll get to a little bit more later, he's just using his scheming and his brain and his tactics to the max shows us how good he is making this whole entire thing. The only thing that he messed up, quote unquote, he planned everything to the T and it went exactly to plan except for the second check, which JB saved him from. But then we said last episode, we haven't seen him throw down really yet. Now we saw him save himself from the assassin, but now he comes out and he mm -hmm. starts wielding that sword baby and he is taking people out mm -hmm. yeah his his son nagakata he got confronted by Josen earlier saying like oh you haven't even seen battle you don't know what you're doing dude f he steps up and slices and dices right away like mm -hmm. he was not afraid and he actually had it shows he has some skill and training so, so i just love the tornaga family and Lenny. oh god <laughs> so cool yeah and then i Probably should have said this too. Um, you get a quick info drop from JB and Mariko before the fighting starts that he does have two kids, Tudor and Lisbeth, but we don't get more details. We'll we'll expand on that conversation when it happens later. Uh, mm -hmm. So after the fight happens, you see Ishido's messenger man get away, which he eventually delivers all of this Tornaga information to him. And that literally plays out in these next two mm -hmm. scenes. So let's just keep going. When they finally arrive to the port and luckily JB sees Captain Sama, who I don't have his name either. And I hate to mix it up with Captain General of the Portuguese, but this is Captain Sama because that's what that's what JB calls him. So yeah. I'm going to stick yeah. with it for now. But this is the crew that he helped save Rodriguez with. He was like sailing with them. So he already has that that built in trust and they and they like him. But it all results in them seeing the black ship out on the sea and they're all going to just try and leave. They're just trying to get out of Osaka. And that was the whole goal of this of this journey. But this is a really cool part. We're going to keep talking about Bontaro for because this scene was freaking amazing when they have to go. They don't have an option. They all jump on the rowboats. The entire party of people jump on the rowboats and they just missed picking up Buntaro who was trying to distract people and he has like the coolest scene of all time of him just <laughs> realizing he's gonna die like he murders six people before turning and and talking to Tornaga and basically bowing like his his respect and showing that he's gonna fulfill his duty and then I just got so many chills when Tornaga stands up and like gives him his flowers too and just like everything about that scene just screamed like high level respect of like a high lord in Japan in the 1600s and it was just so perfect and and then it ends with him running into the crowd which do we all think he's alive because I don't know. Dead. I, I think he's dead, but we didn't see. He's it, super so. dead, but we didn't see it. It's we didn't true, see. But it. There's no ways. Yeah. Uh, yeah so, I mean, gotta... I don't know how like they, how much they want to get into like the drama of things, mm -hmm. but like I could see later in the season, like JB and Mariko like being more of a thing, and then he shows up like I'm not dead, and it's like a. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think mm -hmm. he's dead. He's got to. I feel like that is a perfect way to kill him off. I'm in. I honestly yeah. thought he was going to do Sapaku right there before charging. 
Like I thought he was just going to take his own way out, but it makes more sense. Yeah. But he got to take a couple more bodies. That was probably better for Mm -hmm. his fiefdom. So distracted them and everything. Yeah. I was trying not to shed a tear, honestly, when (laughs) Tornaga stood up and bowed and Bontoro uh, just bowed back. I was like, there's so many emotions going through so many different people right now. Like Mariko mm-hmm. has to watch her husband, even though she didn't really like him. She still like she respects him. Maybe she does like him. I don't freaking know. She has to watch him die. Eve JB's like, we gotta go back. And Buntaro, when uh, JB was doing his whole act about trying to stop the inspection of finding Tornaga, at the very end, Buntaro was like, This is who we're fighting for, like this mm-hmm. fucking yeah. weird guy. But it doesn't matter. He was the one in the in the middle of the woods where he's like, you guys hurry to the ship. I'll stay here and hold them all off. He was the one that called and made that. So after everything, he doesn't even like what he's fighting for, but it doesn't matter because Tornaga is his lord and he will do whatever. And yeah. absolute respect that they had for each other. Maybe he did kill those 30 people and we'll see him, <laughs> you know, swimming ashore next like episode. Dynasty but, Warrior, he just slices through every single one of them. Just... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I just needed to gush on him because I, this scene was something else. I absolutely lo- loved it. I'm with you, man. And I didn't think about that. And I didn't have that opinion until this episode, which is cool because I thought I was so set in my ways about him. And then he turns it all around in one episode. So, yeah. okay. So this next grouping of scenes is going to be our last like long conversation because it's going to cover a lot. It's just going to be them going out onto the sea and they're actually going to interact with the black ship and every and Rodriguez and um, Captain General, like all of this, like the parlay, them deciding that JB has to stay behind the whole deal that they make everything up until them escaping, which I know that's a lot to cover, but a lot of it's action, intense, intense, just moments. So we could talk about whatever you guys want to start with, but just yeah, black ship and everything about them escaping Osaka. The deal. I had no idea what the deal was going to be. I thought they were going to be fucked. I thought uh, Tornaga was going to have to like give up a lot more. But I guess when you get 10,000 tail, I don't even know what that means. Silver pieces mm-hmm. and investing in the silk trade is it's not like, hey, you get 5,000. It's you get all of this to invest and how well you invest, you'll get half the profit. Um, for the church in Edo, you know, Martine was like, oh, my God. Oh my God, this is it. Mm-hmm. This is what we've been waiting for. So that was perfect. I'm sure he had that in his back pocket the whole time. He was like, I got that whenever I need it. Um, so uh, the the deal itself, um, I feel like Toronaga, you know, both both parties got a good deal. Yeah, and you, like you knew the Captain General had the leverage in this moment. And he was like, dude, I don't even care about your permission at this point. Like, you're not getting out of here without me. Like, you have to come with a sweeter deal. So he kind of played it correct. I would say the captain general where he's like, I'll tell, I'll take you out of the the barricade. If you, if you do that for me. So mm. it all worked out, but I guess the question for Martin and I want to pose it to Jimmy, cause we really got into the Martin stuff. I was going to jump in two. anyway. Yeah. I feel like you were kind of on the, you were more right after him being willing to lie, not lie, but imply that they would help Toronaga, which is what the other father said to do. Like, yeah, we're not going to do that. We're not going to actually use our religion to force the other two councilmen to do what Toronaga wants. Like, we're not going to do that. But you can let on and mm-hmm. imply that we are going to. And Martin doesn't push back. So I was I was disappointed. And I think you're kind of well, right, Jimmy, that, that maybe Mariko was what was keeping him in check in the first translation scene, because maybe he is willing to cross some lines just to get the, the job of, of bringing um, Catholicism to Japan. That is so funny that you say that, because I was going to jump in and say I was almost turning the other way. No way. <laughs> no way. So, like, That's so, funny. so wait, let me let me just explain, because um, I think it to me, it definitely cements that the other priest is our bad guy in that mm-hmm. religion. Right. Martin. And Martin, he definitely, <laughs> like we said, no matter what, he cares most about the religion, right? Yeah. He cares most about what's best for Catholicism. And I still do think, though, now, after watching that scene, that he did feel uncomfortable. Because I think the one thing that the, the other priest did say is, like, yeah, we can imply that kind of thing. But he also said, like, we can't tell them to do to be on Tornaga's side, but we can like have them prey on it and they might <laughs> think themselves mm-hmm. that they should join Tornaga. I don't know. Like, I, yes, he did. He did quote unquote, like lie. But at the same time, 
I really I thought that in this negotiation scene, he was again seemingly the one that was more honest, and it was the other priest that was pushing him towards the not so good side of things. I, I, I see that. So it seems like I was super far to Martin's pure. You were super far to he's probably <laughs> we're not. in the and middle. Yeah, somewhere. now we're back. Yeah, we're closer to the middle. And I actually think I might have oversold it where I don't truly think he was being like manipulative here, but he didn't like Father Dell. Yeah, he was didn't saying, say like, bro, no, I'm not doing that shit. Mm. Yeah, exactly. But again, and then they, they go on to say, like, we're still going to hold him to that church even after he's dead, even if he dies. So like, the, you're right. Yeah. Father Dell is the enemy and Father Martin yeah. has redeeming qualities, especially because Marco's on our side. And that seems to be right. like a pressure point for him that we could maybe kind of use that to get his morals in Toronaga's favor. But I do love like Toronaga being a genius and really trying to focus on using the, the religion to sway two four two fifths of the councilman to his side so he has the majority but go ahead so let me ask you guys this question in this negotiation it looks like we're doing the damn thing it's working out for both sides but then the ship captain basically says jb you're not coming right mm -hmm. so you would think that's a big l but then tornaga without the leverage basically has to say like sorry bro you're out to jb so he basically was a he was basically accepting the fact that he was going to move forward without JB because he didn't know what JB was going to be the freaking man and outrace them and save his life. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Why is it just is it this moment that he was going to get assassinated that he decided like, OK, it's time to start this war, because in episode one, he was like, if we go to war, we don't have enough people. It's not good. It's not going to work out. And then in episode three. He's hiding himself. He's ready to roll out of Osaka and he's ready to, to start the war. Like what was like, I thought it might have been JB was the thing that changed things. But if he was willing to lose him, was it just like, hey, I was about to get assassinated? Well, actually, it wasn't even him getting assassinated. No. It was JB. So I don't I, I really think the whole thing comes down to the fact that he was a prisoner in Osaka. So it didn't necessarily matter what his end game plan was. But once he decided that they were going to impeach him, regardless of what happened, there was no there was no way out where he wasn't going to get murdered by the other four councilmen. And he saw his opportunity to escape. I think now I think in the back of his head, if he's like, if I get out of here and live like the power fight's going to happen regardless. And I think he just leaned into it once he realized there was a way out like this whole plan and like there was no other option. It was either die or go to war. So even if you, so, even if he wasn't outwardly showing that he was going to go to war before the assassination attempt, I think in the back of his head he was like scheming and plotting to. That's the only option that yeah, that's he knew being it was going to happen at some point. Yeah. Okay, and then to him, JB is a plus, but he's not a do or die. I guess. Yes, because and he then, obviously had to accept the fact that he lost him. Right. There was no way around that. He was going to be sad about it, but I think what slightly rem remedies like that feeling was them presenting the logbook and saying this is proof of his crimes which mm -hmm. if he didn't have to do anything about it he was just going to be like okay i i mean like whatever like i wasn't going to i wasn't going to say no to this deal regardless and in the end he even says like i don't really care about the logbook like it's going to take us so long to translate this which i thought that was yeah. freaking awesome so yeah. i think he was just allowing them to think that they were really forcing his hand when it wasn't really gonna jb was not gonna be a deal breaker for tornaga living or not like he wasn't gonna risk right. his life to keep him alive i think he wanted okay. him for what he like got into or I, he wanted him to train his men about you know the way he fights and war tactics like that but like luke was saying it was never a deal breaker getting out of osaka obviously alive with his people number one jb was just like a source of information <laughs> right yeah and okay. this is this is where a lot of the best banter for the episode comes when it's just JB and Rodriguez. Like when they first pull up, they're so like this, they have such good banter. But the second time they pull up, which is the second half of the scene after Tornaga and Mariko tell JB he has to stay behind with the crew. And JB's like, fuck that. We're going. Like we're gonna we're gonna ride this yeah. out. And like the coolest it is the coolest way ever. But when he rolls up. And I think I wrote the quote down, but when he rolls it. up and he just it. says, like, you black eyed son of a shit fisted whore, like, it's just so funny. <laughs> They're back yeah. and forth because Rodriguez, you know, is just loving the drama. And he was like giving that yeah. smirk like he's listening to the black uh, ship captain, but he also is happy that JB is mm -hmm. not giving up and like he's not just going to surrender. So and then this leads to one of the coolest like chases and just like. 
you know, tension filled moments of the episode of of them actually letting JB and the crew through the blockade. And then Rodriguez makes the personal decision to repay the debt, which I think completely saved his character. I was worried that he wasn't going to do Dude, it. But then when he did, I so was good. just like, yo, Rodriguez is a top three character of the show without yeah. a doubt. Hell yeah. How's your leg? How's your mother? She's dead. <laughs> Oh, that's sorry. sad. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Rodriguez, I when he, you know, he's getting the five points to port and all that, he's getting the orders and he's doing it. I think the one order where he's like, turn harder, five more points, he's like, that's gonna damage the hole. Like, is that is this really yeah. what we want to do? So he doesn't respect his captain in that way, right? Like his captain gave him his order, he didn't listen. But I think it was a mix between <laughs> the two of wanting to repay jb but also not wanting to damage the ship knowing that it wasn't the right call so it was mm -hmm. like kind of both together and i i need them to be bros i need them to be on the same team and just you know fighting together same yeah, yeah. i got two things that i want to say about this whole thing the first thing is that we forgot to say that again jb saved their ass because he saw the people in the boats in the mm -hmm. distance he mm -hmm. said is there a fish the fishermen out at night and he's the reason. I mean, they would have went and, and walked right yeah. in, or yep. walked, and that was, sailed that's right into it. Kiyama's hired bandits or whatever. Yeah. And then this is what I was alluding to earlier in the episode where Tornaga, again, is a genius. Whether he meant to do this or not, I would assume he did mean to do this. Ashidu has a statement where he says, or I guess that his, his boy said to him, I guess Yabu's not on our side anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. Ashidu thinks he lost Yabu because Yabu went with this. And Yabu had no idea that Tornaga was in, in there and hiding. Because right. he even says, if you're going to make plans like this, please let me know. Mm -hmm. So that makes Ashidu think, all right, guy, sandbag this. We're out. He's we're out on this guy. So it put Yabu on Tornaga's side and against Ashidu without even allowing Yabu to make that decision himself. And hmm. even better, just to add on to that, Ishidu now doesn't mess with the two Catholic, well, at least specifically Kiyama, who was willing to kill his men and do all these things against behind yeah. his back and kill the heretic. We see that all play out later. This is just good. There's a chance the door yeah. is open for Ishido to come to our side now, right? Like, I mean, maybe not because he's <laughs> anti Yabu, but as long as the power isn't consolidated amongst the councilmen, that's just good news for mm. our side. And yeah. that seems yeah, to, right. like this was like the best episode in terms of like laying the board and like seeing the advantages for Tornaga actually being on the, the upper hand than the lower hand. It feels like we're in the best spot politically, at least. And yeah, like and then you even see the moment when when the whole ship race is going on, like Tornaga is such a good dude. Like he he even like visibly like or audibly yells like he did it as soon yeah. as um, yeah, yeah. JB gets through. And I, I literally just got chills right now. Whenever Tornaga <laughs> is emotional or like shows anything but like high, just like buttoned up respect, I like break. Yeah. I freaking love it because it just shows he's yeah. human and he's just the man that yeah whatever. But he's like all of his plans coming together. This whole episode just showed his prowess and like dude, he's the man. Yeah, Agreed. The, I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, when they're on the ship race and everything like that, Marco's like, he's mad. And Tornaga's like, yeah, he is. And I freaking love it. And he was <laughs> he was all about it. Um, but to go to Ishido now, uh, button heads with the other council members, like Kiyama is literally saying like, oh, I had the heretic in my possession. Tornaga stole him from me. And you, Ishido, did nothing. So now they're like throwing blame back and forth. They didn't even mm -hmm. give a shit. Ishida's like, why are you killing people in my city that I swore to protect and everything like that? So we knew that they weren't 100% on the same team, but now that they're actually butting heads is just like, that's exactly what Tornaga wanted. I want yeah. mutual mutual downfall. And let's just keep talking about that scene for just like another second because you're right. Like we, we pretty much laid out everything that happens here. It's them fighting. Um, and then we already brought up Hiramatsu coming in and just being all cheeky, saying like, oh, well... <laughs> Tornaga oh retired or resigned from the council and and the Tycho said you need five people to vote he's like oh too bad I only see four like the whole thing had that cheeky undertone that I, I loved and now they're gonna have to figure out what to do because they can't they can't impeach him because there's mm -hmm. no nothing to vote on and he resigned so it just really works out um and then I have a question do you guys know why Ono use it has that curtain there when he is covered up I thought it was to hide himself yeah but it was like I think it it's like, supposed to be that you're like you're not supposed to go near him or touch him. I really think it's supposed to be oh, to protect. Like but a, it, but at some sense. point, at some point in the other episode, he does like 
move the curtain and show us what he mm -hmm. looks like to talk to them. But yeah, yeah. That's, that's why, why I, I was a, saying, I'd be like, oh, get away from me, bro. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. That was a dumb question. I just didn't, but that makes sense. They would have no idea what really causes, causes leprosy. Like you don't want to touch him. Yeah. 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 Anything else you want to throw out there, Jimmy, for that scene? The the councilman last fighting scene? No, no, I think it was perfectly done here. Matsu's a freaking homie. How about you, Paul? You good? Yeah. I, it's okay. just the way he says, I fear you only have four. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you, you know exactly what you're doing. Okay, so let's take it home. This is the last bucket I have written out, and it's just the, the coupling of scenes of everything that happens after the the successful ship escape and this just starts with Toronaga saying take me back to my pilot which i thought was awesome because he says jb's my pilot like well, that was just so oh, yeah. cool he's like i don't need you anymore we're out of osaka so i'm good so he goes back there's a couple of conversations that i'm sure we can bring up and then just to me like the most endearing scene of all time is just tour and aga and and jb like the diving thing and then like the race like that whole thing just made me smile the entire freaking time but yeah well, well we can end with that so i guess the couple of conversations are more important of just right when he gets back onto the ship and the squad is back together yeah so some of the details the ship is going to drop tornaga off at edo um tornaga's son will go with yabu and JB and everybody and go to Ajiro to train the new regime that Tornaga is trying to get going. Um, Tornaga is trying to explain to his son about this whole enemies and friends game that you're playing because the son's like, why don't you trust me? You know, why didn't you tell me all this other stuff? And I guess Tornaga is just trying to teach him a lesson because we learned Tornaga was given away as a hostage when by his father when he was his son. So he's he's, I guess, known this his whole life. So he's trying to pass it on. Um, it's Theon Greyjoy, man. Yeah, and just uh, JB, we were talking to Mariko, just talking about the horizon. You know, I was like, this guy's smooth. I can't. I feel like he was genuinely talking from the heart, though, when he was talking about the, the horizon beckoned me. I left my home. I know it was a terrible decision. I feel like he wasn't trying to, like, win her over. He was just talking no. from the heart. Because if you're trying to win her over, you'd say the opposite of everything he said. Pretty right. much <laughs> true. It was, I, I said Buntaro is the deadbeat dad. He's the deadbeat dad. Like he's he knew he had They're a both, kid on yeah. the way and he just like left, whatever. I didn't see that for his character. Like I didn't think he was gonna have two kids in in back in Europe, like all that. I didn't expect that. I don't know if I now feel like I sh we should be rooting against him hooking up with Mariko because he has a wife, right? Or he has at least a, a baby mama. I don't know. But now I, I feel thought, like I thought Mariko was going to be doing the cheating, but it seems like he's going to be doing the cheating if they hook up. I thought it was going to be that the end of the story was that she like passed away or something, meaning like the daughter or like the, mm. the his kids or something, meaning like, again, sadly to say, but like freeing him up where he doesn't actually have any family or attachment you know, but it ends up being it's a powerful conversation because he isn't trying to win her over. Like you said, Paul, he is telling her the honest truth. He's like, yo, I'm a POS, man. I mean, I freaking jumped on this boat and rode away because the horizon beckons me. I don't want kids. I don't want a wife. I want to be free. I don't think at this time he may be like, oh, America, good looking lady, like that kind of <laughs> stuff in his head. But he's not specifically hitting on her because he also says like, I'm really sorry about your husband and that kind of stuff. I yeah. think that they're just both being genuine with each other. And that's honestly the start of a good relationship being yeah, it is. completely <laughs> honest. <laughs> I'll root for uh, some adultery. If it's that, if it's those two, no. <laughs> oh, my God. both great looking people. Um, so I honestly forget about this deal that happened sometimes because so much other happened in the episode, but Tornaga confronts JB about his logbook. Mm -hmm. Say piracy punishable by punishable by death, but it's gonna take forever to translate. So in the meantime, yeah. smooth, dude. Smooth. Yeah. In the meantime, you're gonna train my men in your tactics, teach them everything, how to shoot cannons, blah blah blah. And JB pulls back at first, but he's like, you know what? It would be a great honor. I only ask for my ship and my men in return. So red flag for me. That's a red yeah. flag for me. I don't want him to think that he's ditching out as soon as he gets his boys back. Cause fuck that. Yeah, I. That's we're, what we're I, Japanese now. Like that's that's yeah. what this is. <laughs> we ride for Tornado. Like yeah, what, exactly. what are you doing? So so yeah, I'm a little worried. You know, Jimmy was talking about. I he or I don't. One of you guys was talking about didn't see that side of 
JB about being real bad. You know, maybe there is a whole other side because the thing was kill all these people, destroy all these churches. And that was the main goal from the get go. So I don't know if there's going to be a scene in the future where he's like on the ship ready to leave with this crew. And he's like, you know what? I got to turn back. Like, you know, I actually care too much. I want to fight for this guy. That's what I hope to see. Um, but he also gets the name Hatamoto. He's yep. like, I can't be calling this guy a barbarian if he's one of my vassals. So I mm -hmm. bestow the name Hatamoto. And Mariko was blown Hot away. She, <laughs> it's uh, Hot Tomato. Hot Tomato. <laughs> Um, Hatamoto. But, yeah, Hatamoto. And Mariko was like, he just made you Hatamoto. So it wasn't he just gave you a name. He just made you Hatamoto. That is a and great honor. Like, mm -hmm. That's so cool, man. And but Jimmy, before you jump in, the other thing that I already mentioned it briefly, but also in this conversation, we find out that Yabu's job is going to be to study everything that uh, JB does, like just learn, learn his ways, learn their way of war, bring it back. We're going to use this to to help take the throne, essentially. So just a great conversation, plot mover. Yeah. I think it puts us all in the right spot. But Let's go for a swim, man. Yeah, yeah let's go for a swim. That shit was God. so good, man. How, how, did, it, how did those makeshift undies stay on for all those dives? That's oh, what they I saw. Know, dude. They saw his undercarriage yeah. 100% when he was <laughs> yeah. in the air. And yeah, hundred percent. But yeah, that that just made me so happy watching the, that scene mm -hmm. where they're gonna do the dive over and over and over and over, and then and then um, Tornaga's like, "Let's race," and America is mm -hmm. like, "Don't let him win." He's like, "I wasn't planning on." I it just made me like, like, what else would you be doing back in that day? Like a, <laughs> a race to the shore. It's like nowadays we're like, "Oh, race to the shore, is boring as shit, bro." Now mm -hmm. that's probably like the most exciting thing they could think of at that right. time. <laughs> I loved it, man. I, I loved it. <laughs> so good. And it it does still say a lot about Toronaga. It, it keeps characterizing him further, like past the point of just what, what's being presented to the world. Like he is a very calculated person. He wants to see this over and over so he can study it and learn it and get the, become the best at it. Like that's just, yeah. That's so Toronaga. Is what he it's did pretty good on his dive. His first ever dive is pretty damn good. I mean, he belly flopped yeah. a little bit, but... <laughs> Seven no. out of ten, but if he's just watching yeah. for the first time, that was solid. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was amazing. I don't know if it had to go into like the embarrassment aspect if you try it and you don't succeed. I don't know how much that went into it, or if Toronaga is just like, hey, I'm just going to watch, make sure, and then just nail it on the first try. Yeah, what if he like yeah. didn't succeed and then he was like, Oh, I'm gonna have to get rid of my whole bloodline now. I'm yeah, just <laughs> I fucked up the dive. Yeah, time to, time to end it. That's so um, freaking funny, man. That's awesome. Yeah, it's just JB has a line after the second dive. He's like, ah, observational learner, huh? And I'm <laughs> just cracking up. But yeah, I, I didn't know. I thought this was gonna be like borderline punishment for JB's piracy, and he was gonna just make him do this over and over again. But now it's Tornaga wanting to learn. And when he's talking to Mariko. She's saying, you know, maybe we can try again tomorrow. He's like, no, tomorrow is tomorrow. I will learn how to dive today. <laughs> and just he's like, let's go. Oh, yeah. God, he's so cool. I would ride Love for that it. guy so hard. On top of all of this that we're talking about, it's still seed planning for friendship, like not just yeah. co-workers, right? Like this is yeah. like, this is so awesome. I think if one of them ends up dying, like this is the seed planting of them being able to have an emotional end to the season. Because totally. yeah. they're they're forming this bond past just warriors. So all in all, it was just yeah. a great way to end an intense action filled episode with death. And I just like I can't think of complaints about Shogun as a show. Like through three episodes, yeah. it's damn near perfection. The world's catching on. Like everybody else is talking about it. The podcast is doing numbers. Like the whole thing. Like this is just such an experience. I'm trying to not take anything for granted because I know if it is truly a limited one season series, like we're never going to get more of this. But I'm living in the moment because tomorrow is it's tomorrow. Like this is fucking awesome. <laughs> Shogun in, is man. today. Shogun <laughs> is today. Tomorrow is tomorrow. This is I'm just all yeah. in. And I can't wait. Hi. Dude, I like stood up when Tornaga's like, here we go. And JB's mm -hmm. like, hi. I was yeah. I stood up and I just started going, hi, like around mm -hmm. the house. I just this show gets me so emotional, so animated. Um, I love it. Emily's not Emily's in the room with me as I'm watching and a scene happens and I like say something out loud. I'm like, oh my God, that's huge. And all it was is something small, but the show is so good at showing the repercussions and everything it leads to. It's I, I'm obsessed with after three episodes. Like just as you guys are, I'm mm -hmm. I'm so happy that this is in our lives right now. Mm-hmm. Agreed. You guys nailed it. I don't have anything else to say, man. It, I'm just enjoying this. How many episodes of the season? 
I, I, is I'm it eight or ten? Scared to, I'm scared to think. I don't want to look, so I don't want it to end. Agreed. <laughs> I hope it's twenty, <laughs> but uh, I it's probably eight or ten. I, we should we'll yeah. we'll know by next podcast. Ten. Yeah. Oh, it's ten. What'd you say, Paul? Ten. All right. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Um, I like. Are that. you about to sign us out? Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? All right. So last thing, just go watch Dune Part Two. All right, guys, that was our coverage of episode three of Shogun. It was a blast. We're having an awesome time talking about this. We already alluded to this earlier in the episode. If you want to talk to us about Shogun, jump on our Discord. The link's in our description. You can find um, you can find conversations with us about Shogun on Twitter, on Instagram. We're talking about it all over the place, but Discord is where we're having the in-depth conversations. We have almost 200 members in the Discord we have a lot of conversations about different TV shows going on. We have a general TV section, a general movie section. If we're not having a specific channel for any show you want to talk about, trust us, we'll talk anything with you guys. So jump on there. Otherwise, if you like what you heard, check us out at BingetownTV.com. You can check us out at Binstown TV on any of your favorite podcast apps. We cover so many different TV shows. I talked about all of that in the intro. You can find all of that at BingetownTV.com or on our main Binstown TV feed. I guess that's it, guys. Today is Shogun. Tomorrow is not Shogun. <laughs> Next week, Shogun. <laughs> we'll be back. We can't wait. Once again, we are Binstown TV. And thank you so much for listening. <laughs>